You're welcome to Access Conference 2013 with the theme Embracing Sustainable Leadership. Today to discuss with me about what good leadership is all about is Mr. Christopher Meyer, is the CEO of NEV LLC. It's great to have you, Mr. Christopher. Thanks, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Yes. In your uh, panel of discussion, yeah. you raised a very fundamental issue. You said that leadership has moved from a broadcast to a two-way conversation. How does that play out today in nations and corporations and organizations? Yeah, well, you know, in, in uh, the past, we did not really have the technology for a two-way conversation. And so what just came to mind when you asked the question was Franklin Roosevelt, when he was president during the Depression, had fireside chats where the nation would listen to the radio uh, every Saturday or whenever. And Barack Obama, on the other hand, tweets and engages in the social media and you know there was controversy when he took office about hanging on to his blackberry um, so the the notion that a leader must be in direct contact with the people that he or she is leading is something that has is an idea whose time has come along with the technology wow. that's, that's very interesting because it's not just for casting or giving the instructions but engaging the people yes because yeah people's minds change so fast now. Again, another consequence of social media is that ideas spread across uh, a nation almost instantly. So if you're not in tune with what kind of reaction you're getting, uh, then how can you claim to be representing the people you are leading? That doesn't mean the people are always right, and of course in the media you will find all kinds of opinions, some of them nonsense, but at least being aware of that and addressing and showing that you're listening is what convinces people that you have their best interests at heart. Now, you, you also raised something which is very uh, key today and people look for it in various spheres and that's authenticity yes. as an element in leadership. Can you uh, expand a bit on that? Yeah, I think, of, I think of leadership as the ability to enroll someone else in activities or purposes larger than themselves. Now, if I'm your leader and my purpose isn't larger than myself, then I'm just asking you to serve me. So that doesn't work um, because you have better things to do. So authenticity is a demonstration, a credible demonstration, that what the leader is doing is important to the community being led as a whole, himself included, of course, there can be dissent, but, but the nation or the company as a whole. And people demonstrate that when they visibly uh, take decisions that may not even be in their individual best interest. So if you take a decision that will be politically unpopular because you can explain in the long run why that's the better thing, uh, that is one way to show authenticity. But I think people feel it. If, you can, if you're speaking to people and you're, and you're talking from a place where you believe in an idea, it's almost as if the idea itself becomes the leader. And you're allowing that to happen by representing it and engaging in this dialogue with the other people you want to believe in the idea. Well, you know, when you talked about authenticity and then being uh, real with the people, what came to my mind was uh, the Mandela phenomenon. Mm. You know, and you, you said something about empathy. Yes. Because, uh, Last Tuesday, people, leaders gathered across the world, over yes. 90 leaders, because of what he stood for. And uh, he had empathy for his people when he was president. Yes. Now, do you, you talked about empathy too. Now, do you see that uh, more, or is it waning in this time? No, I think it is waxing. Um, I think that, uh, in part, this shortened distance through media, that I can... I don't have to send you a memo, I can send you a video of myself talking about something if I want, um, is more human and it allows empathy to come to the fore. But I think there's a, there is a broad, almost historic change uh, that is enabling empathy to be a greater part of the culture. And that is, and I have to say I'm speaking largely on uh, the basis of US business culture right now, that you know, in the Industrial Revolution, we built these wonderful factories and machines, and they're wonderful because they created huge value for everyone. You know, Henry Ford said, I need to, uh, 
this is a valuable product I'm making and I need to pay my workers enough so that they can buy it. And it was this wonderful virtuous circle. It was very uh, rigid technology of production. You, know, you don't change a factory every day. You don't download upgrades to a factory, right? Um, and the, the business culture took on the characteristics of its technology, rigid, unchanging, mechanical, and there was no room for your emotion at work. If you display emotion at work, that was unprofessional. Today, that's changing radically. Uh, first of all, as I say, technologically, the software world changes all the time. You keep downloading upgrades and um, so the, the pace is different, but also so much of it is about people and media that uh, it's as if the steel industry had become, you know, the fashion industry or the movie industry. The whole business culture is more, uh, emotion is more accepted in it. And that's very positive in my opinion. First of all, because we should be human beings when we work. Second, because if I'm expressing myself to you, then you can understand me and we will collaborate better. So I think there is a long-term historic trend because of the change in the fundamental economic technology toward emotion and therefore uh, toward empathy. Then finally, what's your, lead, uh, what's your word for leadership approach in Africa? I believe, uh, apart from coming to Nigeria, you must have traveled to some other African uh, countries. So what do you have to say to young emerging leaders in Africa? Hmm. I, I think... Um, you know, I, I know a little about Africa. I feel a little presumptuous a answering the question, but I would say have high expectations. Don't settle for what was good enough before. The, again, there is so much more transparency in the world, the ability to see what the consequences of decisions are, the ability to see how people are living, the ability to see how governments or chief executives are behaving is much greater than it ever was and the power to express uh, opinion about it is much greater than it ever was. So, so I believe that the means of empowerment are there to know and to express and uh, use them and insist on authentic leadership. And I can't say what all the political moves will be that will make that rise to the top, but that will be a force like gravity that, that moves the quality of leadership upward. Thank you very much, Mr. Christopher Mayer. It's been great having you. Thank, Thank you. you. My pleasure.